morning, Dr. Philip Laurie from uh, UP Health Systems Marquette. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure, Vicki. Thank you. So every month I ask you, what's a good thing to talk about? I was surprised when you said, let's talk blood transfusions, because my brain doesn't think cancer and blood transfusions. Well, cancer is a disease where we use strong treatments. Many of those treatments interfere with the body's ability to make blood. Oh. Plus, there are certain kinds of cancer, leukemias in particular, where the disease itself is having an impact on the blood production. So transfusions are literally life-saving for many cancer patients. I guess I never even thought about it, but you said also transfusions always run just a little risk of danger for anybody. I think so. It, it's, I think the thing to understand is that it's not a simple uh, type mm -hmm. of treatment. It is something that is critically important but has to be used carefully. There okay. are some side effects that can occur. And you had shared some of those with me, if we can pull that up real quick, because there are some definite things that needs to be taking a look at. It, we've come a long way. I think it is sure. important to emphasize that years ago, we didn't recognize the infections that could occur, and there was a very large number of people who developed viral infections of various mm -hmm. kinds of transfusions. Better, but not completely eliminated. Sure. Still a small chance. Uh, more importantly, though, there can be reactions to blood transfusions, mm -hmm. allergic reactions. People who get a lot of blood transfusions can become resistant to them over time, and that's important to understand to not overuse them early on in the disease process so they'll still be effective later on when they're still needed. Okay, now everybody thinks though, I, at least I think, well why don't I just have a relative give me blood and then I don't have to worry about any of that. Well I think that is, it is important that people give blood, sure. and so it's important that relatives give blood, but interestingly some of the immune disbalances that can occur during transfusion may be exacerbated by blood coming from relatives. Uh, really? In particular, patients who are going to get a, what used to be called a bone marrow transplant, mm -hmm. now called a stem cell transplant. If they receive transfusions from relatives in advance of the transplant, that may interfere with their ability to successfully go through the transplant itself. Wow, I didn't even realize that. So for people who are looking to, to give uh, blood donations, I, there are a lot of events that go on across the Upper Peninsula. Absolutely, there are, there are blood drives mm -hmm. that are occurring pretty much uh, several times a week in various mm -hmm. places in the Upper Peninsula. And I think I would strongly encourage everybody to consider giving this what can be a gift of life and to do so when one of the blood drives is in their neighborhood. Well, now I know that in, in the next slide that we've got here, we do have a couple of them that are coming up. I was saying that we're gonna have some here at TV6 coming up in the weeks to come, and there are other ones, if uh, we can pull that up real quick, taking a look at other places where you can give blood transfusion or uh, blood donations. Uh, you've got them coming up in Ishpeming, Manistee, Houghton. That center really covers the whole UP. It does. The Upper Peninsula Health System serves 13 hospitals in the Upper Peninsula. So it isn't just this region, it's mm -hmm. really across the entire UP. Uh, anybody who would be interested in finding out when and where a blood drive is in their area can call the UP Health System with the number that's on the screen right now.